thanks for clicking and welcome to another Narculus production. Today we're going to be talking about one of the longest words that I know how to spell. Differentiability. Count how many letters that is and be impressed that I can spell that word. Okay, and soon you'll be able to spell it too and you'll be able to tell all your friends about how you can spell a word that's as long as differentiability. All right, so let's get started on what differentiability is. So, a function f is said to be differentiable if its derivative exists for all values in its domain. Okay? So, its derivative has to exist for all values in its domain. Now, we've talked about this a little bit, a function existing for all values in its domain. We called it continuity, right? Okay, we did that back in the previous chapter, that a function's continuous, it has to exist, uh, the function has to exist for all values in its domain. And then there are a couple other things you had to check as well about the limit, okay, and the function value being the same as the limit. And that is going to come into play here, no doubt about it, okay? All right, so today we're going to look at two ways to discuss differentiability, uh, graphically and analytically. So algebraically, I'm uh, going to analyze functions, and then we're also going to do it graphically. So we're going to start by using a graphical representation of it, okay? Um, <clears throat> and then go into the analytically uh, look at differentiability. I think it's a little easier to understand graphically first. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to remind you that finding the derivative at a point means you're going to find its slope, right? When you find the slope, Okay, you find the derivative at that value. So what we're first going to do is we're going to talk about graphs or look at some graphs that are not differentiable. Graphs of functions, f, that are not differentiable. Okay, so let's take a look at the first graph that's not differentiable. So the first graph of a function that's not differentiable is a function f that is not continuous. So here's a function called f of x. You can see that f of x is not continuous at, let's say, let's call that c, at x equals c. We agree? Certainly not. There's a jump, right? You jump from one uh, piece to the other. So there's a jump discontinuity. This at x equals c, you sure, certainly would not hold the three rules for continuity at a point, right? Because the limit does not exist from the left and from the right. You don't go to the same place. So this function is definitely discontinuous or not continuous at x equals c. If a function is not continuous at x equals c, it cannot be differentiable at x equals c. It can't be. Okay, and there's a reason for that. We're going to talk about it a little bit more later on, um, either in the video or in class together, as to why a function that's not continuous cannot be differentiable. Okay, but that's the first thing you need to know. If a function is not continuous, it can't be differentiable. All right. Okay, so that's your first type of graph that's not differentiable. The second type of graph is this graph. Let's show it to you. It's the graph of the absolute value or a, a version of the absolute value. I claim that at this point, I'm calling it C right here. At this point, the function is not differentiable. <clears throat> okay. What is so special about this point? Well, this point, we call this point, it's a corner. But why can't a function be differentiable at that corner point? Well, remember, finding the derivative of a point means finding its slope. So let's say I were to ask you, what is the slope of the line at the green point? What's the slope of the line at the green point? 
Well, take a look. I hopefully, uh, in your head, you're saying to yourself, well, he wants the slope of the line at the green point, but there, there's two lines. The green point is on two different lines. The green point is on this line that has a positive slope. And the green point is also on this line that has a negative slope. So which line does he want me to find the slope of? Because this point is on both of them. So how can I find the slope of the line at this point? If the at the point, there's two different slopes. So at the corner, there's two slopes. So this graph cannot be differentiable. Okay? You cannot find the derivative at that point because there's literally two slopes. You can't find the slope because there's two of them. Which one do you pick? All right. That's very similar to this picture. I'll draw it as well. Uh, this picture, let's try. Here we go. So at this point here, there it is. You have the same dilemma, right? So we call this point, just so we see it, a cusp. Okay, that's its name, official. All right, but at this point, you have the same issue. What's the slope? Do I take the slope from the line or do I take the slope from this curve? I have no idea. I'm not being told. So since I don't know what slope to take, then this point has two slopes. So it's not differential. Okay. And then finally, our last picture, picture number three, oops, is, let's see if I can draw it. I'll try to draw it over here so you can see it. Yeah. Okay. There we go. There's a curve. I want to find the slope of the line at that point. I want you to find for me the slope at that point. Well, hopefully, you're saying, okay, well, I could might be able to find the slope there. But the slope, what does the slope look like? Well, the tangent line would look like that. We agree. The problem with this tangent line is that it's a vertical tangent line. Right? It's vertical. It goes literally straight up and down. Now, the problem with a vertical tangent line is, what is the slope of a vertical line? The slope of a vertical line is undefined. Right? You can't find it. Literally, if you tried to ski on this slope here, you'd be undefined when you got to the bottom of the hill. Okay? <clears throat> so the slope of a vertical line is undefined. If the slope of the vertical line is undefined, that means the derivative is undefined because derivative is just the slope of that tangent line. So the, t the derivative is undefined, which means that this graph cannot be differentiable there. All right. Okay. So those are the three types graphically that you could see uh, that a graph that's not differentiable. All right. So now let's also take a look at it. Analytically, you're algebraic. So a function f is differentiable at a point x equals a if the function is continuous at x equals a and its derivative is continuous at x equals a. So two things have to happen for a function f to be differentiable at a point. Okay, The function itself has to be continuous at x equals a and its derivative has to be continuous at x equals a. So here's an example. I want to know if this function, this piecewise function, f of x, is differentiable at x equals 3. And we're going to justify our answer. So we're going to justify our answer by doing the following. To figure out if this function is differentiable at the change point, x equals 3, I need to convince you that a couple of things are going to be true. Number one, I have to convince you that f is continuous at x equals 3. For me to do that, for me to continue, convince you that f is continuous at x equals 3, I have to convince you of three things. 
right? f of 3 has to be defined. Well, f of 3, you go into the bottom piece, and 3 squared, that's 9. So, okay, that's defined. Number 2, the limit as x goes to 3 of f has to exist. So, let me try from the left. If I try the limit as x goes to 3 from the left, uh, I use the bottom piece, right? x is less than 3. So, that's going to be... Uh, x squared, so that's going to be 3 squared, that's going to be 9. And then if I try the limit as x goes to 3 from the right, uh, I'm going to be using the top piece, so that's 2x plus 3, so that's going to be 2 times 3 plus 3, that's also 9. So the limit exists, and then f of 3 has to equal the limit as x goes to 3 of f, and it does, so all these are equal, so f is continuous and x equals 3. That's good. So I convinced you of that. Now, I also have to convince you that f derivative is continuous at x equals 3. So now that begs the question, how do I derive this mess? I want to derive a piecewise function. How would I ever do that? Well, I'm sure if you're looking at it, you really are hopeful in that, well, you just derive each piece and leave the change points the way they are. That's exactly how you do it. So the derivative of 2x plus 3 is 2. And x is greater than 3 on the derivative. And the derivative of x squared is 2x. And x is less than or equal to 3. This is my derivative of this piecewise function. You literally just derive each piece. So now I need to convince you that f prime is continuous at x equals 3. So now, how do I convince you that f prime is continuous at x equals 3? Well, I do the same thing I just did over here, but with f prime. So what's f prime of 3? f prime of 3, I use the bottom piece, that's 6. What's the limit as x goes to 3 of f prime? Well, i got to do it separate. What's the limit as x goes to 3 from the left of f prime? I use the bottom piece again. So that's 2 times 3, that's 6. What's the limit as x goes to 3 from the right of f prime? Well, that's just 2. There's no x there. 2. The limit as x goes to 3 of f prime? No. This limit as x goes to 3 of f prime does not exist from the left and from the right. I don't go to the same place. Since this limit doesn't exist, then f prime can't be continuous at x equals 3. So then is this function f of x differentiable at x equals 3? No. It asks you to justify your answer. You just did. This is what it would take for justification. Okay? So this is not differentiable at x equals 3. If you were able to carry through and f prime was continuous at x equals 3, then you would say, can make the conclusion, hey, yeah, f is differentiable at x equals 3 because f would be continuous at 3 and f prime would be continuous at x equals 3. That makes f differentiable at x equals 3. But since uh, we failed here with the limit of f prime, then it's not differentiable at x equals 3. Okay, that's how we look at it analytically. All right, so now, finally, <clears throat> um, we take this statement here and it's going to be a pretty important statement. We're going to use it all the time, believe it or not, as crazy as it sounds. Um, if a function is differentiable at a point, then it must be continuous at that point. So if you're ever told, hey, this function is differentiable, then that means it must be continuous. No doubt, hands down, no questions asked, it has to be. Okay? But the question is, I have on the table is, is the converse true? So my converse means I just switch the two if-then statements around. So if a function is continuous at a point, then it must be differentiable at that point. So the question is, is that true? Now I claim you have already seen multiple cases where a function that is continuous at a point, okay? And you can show me whether or not this statement is true or not. If a function is continuous at a point, then it must be differential at a point. 
I claim you have seen multiple examples of that in this video so that you can show me whether or not there's truth to this statement or not. Okay? And that's what I challenge you to do. And we will talk about your solutions coming up. Okay? And as always, thanks for clicking.